Hi, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Project Thompson. Uh, as always, I'm Dennis Foley, and behind the camera, we've got Han Chong. Today, we're going to be sitting with uh, Emily Pruder. Emily Pruder is, for the last two years, has headed up the uh, Thompson Community Christmas Dinner. Um, and one of the things that we're going to talk about today is about volunteerism. Emily, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is our third episode. Uh, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born and raised here in Thompson, Manitoba. Both my parents moved up here when they were about my age. I'm 21. And they met, fell in love, had four daughters who all grew up to care passionately about northern Manitoba. And everyone is still living in town? I have one sister who goes to school down in the U.S. Uh, other than that, it's me, uh, two of my sisters, and both my parents still live here in Thompson. Oh, fantastic. So one of the things that we're talking about specifically today is the Thompson Community Christmas Dinner. And my understanding, the last two years, you've kind of taken the head role of that. Um, could you give me a little bit of history on, on the dinner itself and when it started and who kind of ran it? The dinner started sometime in the 1980s. I don't have an exact year, um, but it's over 20 years running. It was initially started by Dale Schantz. He is a realtor uh, here in town. So he started that when he owned Chicken Chef back in the day. Um, and it's he organized that for a couple of years and it kind of passed through the hands of different citizens of Thompson, sometimes businesses, sometimes individuals, just spearheading the project. And it's taken place at different locations. Uh, when Dale had started it, it was at the Chicken Chef location. As it went on, uh, different restaurants, different halls hosted the the dinner so that it would have a place to, to be shared. So what exactly is the Christmas dinner? Like what, what kind of an event is it? Really, in its most basic form, it's just a traditional Christmas meal. You know, your, your hot turkey, mashed potatoes, ham, stuffing, all the trimmings just served to anyone who's in need. It's a completely free event served to anybody who, who happens to be in Thompson on Christmas Day with uh, nowhere else to go. Oh, that's awesome. So when exactly did you get involved with the Thompson Community Christmas Dinner? Well, back in October of 2013, I was reading the newspaper. Not that I usually do, but I was just flipping through. I was bored and I saw a little blurb on one of the pages talking about how the organization that had been running the Community Christmas Dinner for the past four or five years wasn't going to be able to accommodate um, organizing the dinner anymore. And it is a pretty large undertaking, so understandable that they couldn't, they couldn't continue to put it on. It's people giving up their Christmas day with their families. Uh, and I read this article and I thought, oh, that's really sad. And I put it in the back of my mind. I didn't, I didn't think anything of it, just closed the paper, that went in the recycling, that was it. And then a week later, I was listening to the radio and I heard it again that the, nobody stepped up to organize the community Christmas dinner and that so far it's not going to be put on. It's gone on for over 20 years, but this year nobody is putting it on. And it was kind of just a crazy little idea, but I called up the CMHA, the Canadian Mental Health Association, and just asked them, hey, how do, how do I do this? And I met with them, they gave me their notes, talked about, you know, you need to get this done, this done, talk to these people, and, and I just ran with it. So, so clearly this isn't something that you could, you know, plan, operate and run all by yourself. There's got to be a lot of people that are involved helping you out. Uh, do you get a lot of support from, uh, from different people helping you host the event? There's definitely quite an outpouring of support from volunteers in the community for the main tasks of, you know, getting the donations and, and making sure that the event runs smoothly on the day of. It's mainly been my older sister and my father who have helped me to organize and make sure everything goes smoothly. However, many, many people called me to volunteer um, and we had lots of people show up on Christmas Day to help, to help prepare for the dinner. Even on Christmas Eve, I had eight people peeling potatoes and carrots for three hours. I, I didn't have to touch I didn't have to touch a peeler. <laughs> they just sat there and they peeled, they were dedicated and they just got the job done. Oh, that's, that's awesome. 
Uh, now, obviously, you can't do something like this out of your own pocket. Um, you know, you, how do you generate the, you know, the donations of the funds required to put on this kind of event? Because I imagine there's the bills would be pretty high doing something like this. The bills, if I were to add up uh, what it would cost to run this, would be way out of anything I could afford um, as, a, as a personal contribution to our community. Thankfully, we have very many generous citizens and generous local businesses that really stepped up to the plate. Um, often I would, I would come back to work and be told by my sister, this person or an anonymous person donated a hundred dollars we had somebody drop off a check for another hundred dollars we got this gift card so it was just every day there was money coming in um you know be it twenty dollars be it a hundred dollars just coming in people that just you know they didn't necessarily want to be the one to step up and, and do the project but they wanted to see the project done so they were happy to support it that's good to hear, and, I, and I, I've seen that with a lot of other organizations that I've been either a part of or I've been, uh, you know, present of. Is uh, Thompson has a very strong um, support core. I don't know if that's even the word that, I, that I'm looking for. Um, I've even had events where we've had people from out of town say, you know, I can't believe you're getting all this stuff. Where I come from, if we were to ask for this, we'd get told to walk away. So. And, on, and something like this with the, with the dinner, it's it's awesome. It's it's absolutely phenomenal, uh, and I'm glad to see that the businesses in town and the people in town are willing to support you. Um, so we've kind of talked about the Christmas dinner, what it is, where it's from, and your involvement. Is there anything else in town that you're involved with? I do work with Girl Guides. Uh, I volunteer with one of the units weekly, so that means helping to actually run the group meetings with the, the girls, uh, and I as well do, do camps with them. So that means you know taking them out to the Boy Scout camp, taking them out to Paint Lake, and learning different camp skills. So I do that, uh, and it's my second year doing that, although I was a Girl Guide as a child. As well, uh, I serve on the board of Pride North of 55, so that's Thompson's local LGBTQ organization that serves to to bring LGBTQ programming to right. to those here in the north. Yeah, they just had their first event last year, right? I, I believe they're planning another one for the summer again. Yeah? yeah, we're we're setting up to to plan another event for for June of 2015. Um, there will be other smaller events happening throughout the year, but our main goal is to throw a festival and a dance party. So that'll be something that's happening in June of 2015 that we're they're preparing for as well. That's something that we did again, uh, we had done last year. So going back to the, to the volunteerism, you're 21 years old, you know, and to, to take on such a large project, um, regardless of the support that you're gonna get is, is a pretty big deal. Um, uh, and then to be involved in these other organizations, um, for someone your age, like, do you find that it's a rare thing or do you see a lot of younger people in Thompson uh, stepping up to the plate? Because I'm involved in it, I do see quite a few faces, uh, people that are my age that are that are stepping up and, and really pushing to help in our community. Really though, when I step back and think about how, how many people there are compared to how many people there are not, it is pretty slim. Um, I, I don't have too many, too many peers my age that are as involved in our community or as in activism for pushing for better change. Uh, I don't, I don't have too many peers like that here. So moving forward, um, what would be your message to somebody, you know, to say, say somebody starting at 19 years old and, you know, that person sees something and wants to get out there. Um, what would, what would be your message to that person? What would you say to that person if they were here in front of you? Don't be afraid of failing. Being afraid of failing is the worst thing you can do. All you can do is hope for the best. Um, I can absolutely say that throughout my endeavors, there have been things that I've failed at, but I didn't go into it thinking I'm going to fail at this project. I had to go into it with a hopeful mind and an eager heart and just do it. So it's scary, but just kind of jump in. Oh, that's, that's great advice. Now, we're kind of throwing you a curveball here. Uh, each one of our guests, we always throw, the, throw this at them. Um, what is the one thing that you think is absolutely phenomenal about Thompson that you would not change? How isolated we are. 
Part of me, you know, when I'm in the middle of the drive to Winnipeg and I'm thinking, okay, I've still got four hours left through this Arctic, I hate to say it, Arctic wasteland, that's what crosses my mind. Um, although at those points I'm thinking, oh, why are we not closer to, to a city? Why aren't we closer to other civilization? Uh, I really enjoy that because we're so far north, we, with all of the other communities around us, we're forced to, to really band together um, and we're our own northern people. So that eight hour gap really separates us from, the, it does separate us from the rest of Manitoba, but I think it really draws people here closer together and it makes us more understanding of our neighbors' struggles um, just in the different communities around here. It really makes us more aware of those things. So you find that being as far north as we are and uh, almost, I guess I'll say, seg segregated from everyone else in, in Manitoba, you find that that brings us closer together? Yeah, I think it really pushes us to have to to care about uh, the other people that, that we're sharing the north with. So all of the people in the different communities, Thompson is the hub of, of that. So I think that it really means, it's really important that, that we all come together. Okay, so I'm going to flip that around on you now, and I want you to tell me what, if, if there was one thing, you know, and it could be more than one thing, like, what would you like to change about Thompson? What, what do you think that, you know, like, is there some kind of a negative stigmatism about something? Like, what would you like to change? It doesn't have to be something that you can change, but just something you would like to see happen. My goal is to have all of the youth in Thompson involved in community activities. I would love to see greenhouses set up here. I would love to see just different resources available to students, to, to different people my age that weren't available that when I was that age. So I really, although those aren't projects I can undertake on my own, I want to, to help people get their own projects going, get their own movements going. So, so really, if I could change one thing, it would be the level of involvement that there is. So you kind of want to see more youth engagement in, yeah. in making a change in our absolutely. future. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. that, that absolutely makes sense. One of the last questions that I'll have for you is, uh, who kind of inspired you to uh, to get out in the community and, you know, at such a young age and try to do things, try to fill the void, so to say? Although she was a part of my life a very long time ago, I had a friend when I was about 10 years old. Uh, her name was Robin McDonald, and she lived across the street from me. She was probably in her late 20s, but I would always go over to her house and she would you know, teach me how to plant things in the garden, show me different ways to, to help better our community. I, I think she worked for an organization that uh, helps to better the lives of women living with, like, who have dealt with domestic violence. I, I think, if my 10-year-old memory serves me correctly. Um, and so it was just through seeing her, this, this young, vibrant woman, she really inspired me to be, to want to be who, who I want to be. Um, she was always just involved in something. She always was making new friends, introducing me to new people. I was a kid, but it, it really left an impression on me. So, you know, as a teenager, I wasn't too involved, but, but once I kind of got to the age where I thought, you know, this is probably how old Robin was when she started her activism, and that's kind of where it took off. Oh, that's perfect. I mean, and, and, and when I talk about inspiration, everybody's got that one person or even sometimes more than one person that, you know, takes them from where they they were as a child and, you know, mm -hmm. to a young to a young adult and then um, shows you the importance of, you know, getting out there and doing doing things to make your surroundings better. And that, that's part of Project Thompson is to do that. We want to showcase the individuals who make up Thompson, who are out there making this place a better you know, a better environment for everybody, not just themselves. Um, and in this series, well, we're probably going to do another video too about volunteerism. Um, from what I've seen, and, and hopefully you'll agree with me, is uh, with the organizations that I've been involved with, I've seen exactly what you've seen where there's a lot of people who don't necessarily want to be at the event, mm -hmm. but they are more than willing to give to the event. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be donation anonymously, or if it's, you know, donation in kind, or if it's actual money. Uh, Thompson's very un unique from what I found in that. Yeah. And, and let's face it, it's, there's kind of a bad rap a little bit about, you know, people not caring about where we live and mm -hmm. care about that. And uh, I hope you'll agree with me, it, it's not the case. No, not at all. No, it's, so 
judging by what I've seen with the community Christmas dinner, I wasn't, unfortunately wasn't there this year, but I was there last year. Mm -hmm. uh, it ran very well. Oh yeah. And I heard nothing but phenomenal reviews about it this year. And I'm hoping that you're going to undertake it again next year. I think that my family wants to talk to me about it, but uh, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm already, I'm already on board. It's a go. So. Well, kudos to your family for stepping up. Too. Yeah, definitely. It's a big, it's a big undertaking. Um, I mean, it's a, you're committing to a 12-hour day on the the one day you yes. you are supposed to have off. Absolutely. Uh, so I just want to say thank you again. Uh, this has been uh, our third episode of Project Thompson. Um, you can check us out. We're on YouTube. You could look up, uh, just type in Project Thompson. We've also got a Facebook page. Uh, if you have any questions or even if there's people that you feel that you want to, uh, to see us interview, um, or if you actually want to be part of the interview process, and you want to come here and watch, uh, that's definitely something that we'd entertain as well. I mean, uh, we want to make this get bigger. And, and just remember the one thing that we're looking to do with this is to showcase to people in Thompson and all around the world that, you know, we do live in a great community. You know, and there are people here that are willing to go out of their way, take, sacrifice their time, their money, um, you know, especially that you know, family time in your case, yeah. um, to to just make our environment around us a lot better. So, hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you next time. Bam. Cool. Damn, another one down. Okay. High five. That was awesome. Yeah, that was good. When I get sponsorship for my mud bogs, you know, I got one business who pays for my pit passes. Okay, Plus yeah. they do this, this, that. Now we're not naming that business, yeah, but, but we're also- Why did one business give me yeah, this? Exactly. I had another uh, local business give you know, me that. Like I've got a business who's willing to donate a, you know, a $300,000 loader mm -hmm. and let one of our guys ride it. That's something we don't yeah. get anywhere else. I mean, and, it, and, it, and it's huge. And anybody who knows, is familiar, is gonna kind of, pick yeah. up on who that is like obviously it's gonna be smooths right yeah. they're the only people that have that so we have a three hundred thousand dollar loader <laughs> yeah exactly so and one of the things we're going to talk about today is about volunteerism um specifically getting younger people involved in helping out <sighs> see it's it's okay <laughs> Uh, some of you may know Emily Pruder has organized the Thompson Community Christmas Center over the last two years um, <laughs> this makes for excellent, like, you know, <laughs> <Be real. laughs> looper footage and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't look at the paper. Just I get expression. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got to get away from that. Booger. Booger. Bum bum diggy. We were going to take the Thompson talk. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of got a bad name. It does, now. yeah. The worst name. <laughs> wow, okay, so sorry. Um, <laughs> um blah, 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 blah. Okay. Before the dinner and during to to help to help on the day of, to help deliver the leftovers, to collect the donations from people. So so really it was a huge outpouring of support from volunteers in the community. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna have to, oh. have to say that again because you mean that so you went out of my camera. So, oh. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I do that to on purpose. Okay. <laughs> our main, our main primary festival. Again? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> On what?